The eight Ivy League schools are all located in the Northeast region of the United States. Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about these universities in a little bit more detail. Ivy League schools are viewed as some of the most prestigious universities in the world, and hopefully this video will highlight some important information about these colleges. So, let's get to it. The first section of this video is going to be about the Ivy League. The Ivy League is a collegiate athletic conference officially established in 1954 in the NCAA Division I. But the term Ivy League is typically used nowadays to refer to the eight schools as a group of elite colleges. The eight members of the Ivy League are Brown University, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Harvard, Princeton, University of Pennsylvania, and Yale. Here is a table that shows an overview of the institutions, including year founded, location, athletic nickname, university colors, and the 2020 numbers for endowments, applicants, admits, and admit rate. As you might expect, the admit rates are typically fairly low and competitive, ranging from about 5% to just under 14%. And for a little bit of history, all of the Ivies except Cornell were found in the colonial period and account for seven of the nine colonial colleges. The other two, Rutgers and the College of William and Mary, became public institutions. Furthermore, Harvard's endowment is the largest academic endowment in the United States, followed by Yale, Stanford, and then Princeton in that order. Lastly, Dartmouth is the only Ivy that uses the quarter system as opposed to the semester system. The next section is estimated costs, and here's a table that reflects the most accurate estimate that's available on each university's website. You'll find that their total direct charge or their build expenses are within the $70,000 range. And as a note, these estimates reflect on-campus budgets and expenses such as mandatory health insurance, personal expenses, and travel costs are not included. Next up is the tier list, but first, I want to state as a disclaimer that this is totally subjective and it could change depending on various factors including personal preference, fit, and major. But for this video, I'm basing this tier list off of a metric I created and I'll explain later. So the first tier is going to be tier 1 and I'll group Harvard, Yale, and Princeton in this tier. And here are the scores I've given these universities to help me determine this. 1.86 to Harvard, 3.14 to Yale, and 3.86 to Princeton. Tier 2 is going to be Penn, Brown, and Columbia with scores 7.57, 9.71, and 9.86 respectively. And lastly, Tier 3 is going to consist of Dartmouth and Cornell with scores 12 and 16 respectively. Here's how I got these numbers. I used the 2020 and 2021 US News and World Report rankings. I also used Forbes America's Top College rankings from the 2017, 2018, and 2019 years. And I also used the Niche College rankings from 2019 and 2021. To understand how these publications rank universities, I would highly encourage visiting their website to check out their methodologies. But these were the three ranking publications that I decided to use, and essentially, the score is just the average of the seven. And here's the raw data that shows how these universities rank nationally. And just for reference for those interested, I use the same metric to analyze other top-ranked universities. Universities that would be in range of Tier 1 would be Stanford and MIT with scores 3.2 and 3.6. As for Tier 2, Caltech and Duke are within range. And lastly for Tier 3 would be University of Chicago and Northwestern. And just for fun, I decided to look at other universities and see how they would fare. Georgetown was at a 19.2 average, UC Berkeley with 24.8, and UCLA with 35.2. I would like to note that for the non-Ivies, the 2020 US News and World Report and the 2019 Niche College Rankings were not accounted for because I couldn't find them. So although it's not complete, hopefully this provides a basic understanding of where they would stack up using this type of evaluation. Next is a fairly simple and straightforward pros and cons list for the Ivy League universities. Starting off with the pros, these universities have rich histories, prestige, and highly esteemed academic programs. You can't go wrong with one of these highly regarded universities. Next, these universities have world-class faculty, and the student body is filled with very intelligent people. And you can't forget about the alumni network. These first two points can definitely open up some opportunities and get your foot in the door, but it's up to you to leverage your profile and capitalize on it. Lastly, these universities offer extremely generous financial aid packages. From a Business Insider article that I have linked in the description, most Ivy League schools offer free tuition for families who earn less than $60,000 annually. However, with that said, you still have to pay for room and board and other expenses. For the cons, even with the generous financial aid packages, attendance is still very expensive. As shown as a snapshot earlier in this video, room and board can easily be above $15,000 and you still have to account for other expenses such as class materials, club memberships, and etc. The second con is going to be the low admission rates and the overall competition. Tens of thousands of highly intelligent and qualified high school seniors apply to Ivy League schools each year, but only very few of them get admitted. 
And in the scenario you're one of those people, you'll likely be in competitive environments, some probably more than others, for grades, club spots and positions, and much more. Lastly, I did not forget about location. However, I want to place this as a neutral as this is pure personal preference. The schools in a more urban environment include Harvard, Yale, Columbia, Brown, and Penn. Princeton is the only Ivy League school in a suburban setting. Lastly, Dartmouth and Cornell offer students a rural environment. So with all the information, I want to briefly talk a little bit more about each campus's freshman academic profiles and demographics. Let's start off with Harvard. The following information is available online if you search common data set. In this file, you'll be able to look at enrollment statistics, their basis for selection on a scale from very important to not considered, academic profile including GPA, SAT, and ACT, transfer admissions, annual expenses and financial aid packages, and much more. If this information is interesting to you, I would definitely encourage taking a look in more detail, but for this video, I'm only gonna cover some of it. So for Harvard's 2019 and 2020 academic year, here's the table that shows the 25th to 75th percentile for SATs and ACT scores. The average high school GPA for first year students who submitted their GPAs was 4.18. About 93% of first year students had at least a 3.75 unweighted GPA. Furthermore, the average financial aid package was just under $61,000. In terms of student demographics, there was a total of just under 21,000 total students and 32% were undergraduates. When looking just at the undergraduates, it was roughly a one-to-one -one ratio for males and females. And here are the demographics for the undergraduate student body. These percentages are rounded to the nearest percent. Next up is Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. The most recent common data set, which was for the 2020 to 2021 academic year, the first year students' SAT composite score was 1470 to 1560, and 33 to 35 on the SAT using the 25th percentile and 75th percentile respectively. However, Yale did not provide the GPA average, unfortunately. The average financial aid package awarded to first year students was just over $65,000. In terms of enrollment, there were 12,060 total students and the split between undergraduates and graduates was 39% and 61%. The undergraduates were again roughly split evenly at a one-to-one -one ratio. And here are the demographics of the student body. Moving over to Princeton, New Jersey, which is also the home of Princeton University. The most recent common data set was for the 2019 to 2020 academic year. From that, their ACT and ACT composites were exactly the same as Yale. The average high school GPA for first year students was 3.91. And of reported information, 89% of first year students had at least a 3.75 unweighted GPA. The average financial aid package was just under $60,000. In terms of enrollment, there were 8,419 total students and 64% were undergraduates. And like the previous two Ivy League universities, Princeton also has a one-to-one -one ratio between males and females, roughly speaking. And this is the chart that shows the demographics of the student body. Next up is the University of Pennsylvania, located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The most recent common data set for Penn was the 2019 and 2020 academic year. Here's a screenshot that shows the SAT and ACT scores in the 25th and 75th percentile. The average high school GPA for first year students is 3.9, and the average financial aid package is about $56,000. In terms of enrollment, there were 22,432 total students and about 45% were undergraduates. When looking at just the undergraduates, 48% were male and 52% were female. And this is the chart that illustrates the student body demographics. The next Ivy is Brown University located in Providence, Rhode Island. For the following information, I've used their most recent common data set, which was the 2019 and 2020 academic year. Here's a screenshot that shows the SAT and ACT scores for first year students. Unfortunately, Brown did not report the GPA statistics, but the average financial aid package was about $56,000. For the 2019 academic year, there were 10,333 total students and about 69% of them were undergraduates. When looking just at the undergraduates, 47% were male and 53% were female. And here's a chart that shows the student body ethnicities. Over in New York City is the home of Columbia University. Unfortunately, Columbia does not release common data sets, so I used what they had in their Wikipedia page. It appears that the source was the 2019 common data set for Columbia, but I cannot confirm the credibility since the link is invalid. However, reporting what they did have for the 2019 academic year, there were 33,413 total students and 27% were undergraduate. And this is the visual chart that shows the demographics of the student body in 2014. Okay, so now let's move over to Hanover, New Hampshire. The town is home to Dartmouth College. I've used their 2020 to 2021 common data set for the following information. 
For first year students, the 25th percentile for SAT composite scores was 1430 and 1550 for 75th percentile. Like some of the other IBs, Dartmouth also did not release their GPA averages. However, we do know that the average financial aid package was about $57,000. In terms of enrollment, there were 6,290 total students, 66% of them were undergraduates and 34% were graduate. For just the undergraduates, 51% were male and 49% were female. And this is the student body demographics. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the 49% is the highest single percentage across all ethnicities in all the Ivy League universities. Last but not least is Cornell University located in Ithaca, New York. Their most recent common data set was for the 2019 academic year. This is the screenshot that shows the SAT and ACT composite scores. Unfortunately, GPAs were not reported. However, the average financial aid package was $51,000. For enrollment, there were 24,027 total students and 63% were undergraduates. 46% of the undergraduates were male and 54% were female. And here's the last chart that shows the demographics of the student body in Cornell. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful in some sort of way. For those waiting for their decisions or for those looking to apply in the future, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you all next time. Peace.